All right, everyone. In this video, I want to go over how to build our Next.js application and take a look at the build output to better understand the static generation form of pre-rendering with Next.js. So far, we've only looked at static generation in development mode. Going back to our first video in the series, I mentioned that Next.js is a React framework for production. So it's crucial to understand how our app is bundled and prepared for production deployment. Let's begin. Up until now, we've been running the dev npm script to run our app in development mode. However, in this video, we want to build our application. And if you take a look at package.json, the script is build. Before running this script though, let me delete this .next folder which is generated when we run the dev script. Now in the terminal, run the command yarn build. The command creates an optimized production build of our application. The output folder once again is this .next folder. But this time, the contents will be different to that of the dev script. I just wanted to highlight that. All right, there are a couple of things to cover and I'm going to start with the terminal. The first thing to notice is that the output displays information about each route in our application. We have three columns, page, size, and first load JS. Page refers to the route. Size refers to the size of assets downloaded when navigating to the corresponding page client side. And first load JS refers to the size of the assets downloaded from the server when visiting the page. Let's begin by making a note of this first load JS shared by all. Now this refers to the code that is downloaded irrespective of the route you're hitting in the browser. This contains the CSS from globals.css, some webpack runtime code, framework code, node modules vendor code like React for example, and some code related to the pages and components in our application. We also have code from underscore app.js, which is a file we haven't really talked about till now. We will discuss more about it later on in the series, but at the moment, all you have to know is that underscore app is a component that wraps every page in our application and the corresponding code is generated as part of the build output. Now all of this is shown as a separate metric and the overall size is 63.6 kilobytes. Let's now move on to the individual pages generated. We have the root page corresponding to index.js. The size of the page is 265 bytes. But if you navigate to the home page in the browser, 265 bytes plus the first load shared bundle of 63.6 KB is also downloaded, resulting in 63.9 KB as the first load JS size for the index route. We then have underscore app, which is already taken care of in the first load bundle, and hence the size is zero bytes. After that, we have a 404 page, which we did not create, but is generated by Next.js for us. If you can recollect from the routing section, I mentioned that Next.js will serve a default 404 page. Its size is 3.18 KB and the first load is 63.6, which results in a total size of 66.8 KB. The last page is the users page corresponding to users.js. Its size is 370 bytes and first load size is 63.6, which adds up to 64 KB. What is great is that the first load size is colored green 
yellow or red. Green refers to performant applications, which is what you should always aim for. So that is the first part I wanted to cover in this video. Now for the second part, let's focus on the legend that Next.js provides for the type of pages generated. Beside each page generated, Next.js adds an indication of the type of pre-rendering. For our root route, that is index.js, we have a hollow circle. If you take a look at the legend provided, a hollow circle indicates static generation. So the page is automatically rendered as static HTML and does not fetch any external data. Same is the case with our 404 route as well. The page does not fetch external data and is automatically rendered as static HTML. But if we take a look at the user's route, we have a filled circle. If we refer to the legend, a filled circle indicates SSG. SSG stands for static site generation and refers to a page that is automatically generated as HTML plus JSON. Such a page uses get static props function to fetch the external data. So this sort of an indication really helps you understand the pre-rendering feature when we build our application. Now there is also server and incremental static generation, which we will talk about in the next few videos. All right, let's now move on to the third part of this video, which is again, really important. And that is understanding the build output. Earlier, I mentioned that Next.js generates the build output into the .next folder. This folder, as you can see, contains few folders and several files. To serve our application for any incoming request from the browser, all of these files and folders are required. However, we can primarily focus on the server and static folders. Within the server folder, we have a pages folder. Within this folder, we have a few different file types. Let's understand them. First, let's take a look at the HTML files. In our build info, we see that the root index.js file is a static HTML page. The same can be found here in the pages folder. We then have 404, which is again a static HTML page. An unexpected page here is the 500 HTML page, which is a default page that Next.js will render for 500 headers in the request. It is not present as part of the build info under routes, but you can see that Next.js does mention four out of four HTML pages were generated. 500.html is the fourth page, but will not be displayed as a route in this build info. The last HTML file in the pages folder is the users.html file. This corresponds to the user's route. And as you can see, this is of type SSG. So it is generated as static HTML plus JSON. And the JSON can be found in users.json. The file contains the data returned from getStaticProps, which is the user's prop required for the page. Now, apart from the HTML and JSON files, you might also see JavaScript files. Now, these files contain code that cannot be sent to the browser but they are a transformation of the pages and components written in our app. For example, you can see here in users.js, the user and user list components are transformed into React elements. But if these aren't sent to the browser, what about hydration? And this is where the static folder comes into picture. Within static, Within chunks, we have another pages folder. This folder contains JavaScript files, which can be sent to the browser. Typically, 
it will contain code to hydrate a page and make it interactive. Outside the pages folder, there are a few other files which are sent to the browser, but it is not specific to the code we write. It is framework code, vendor code like React, polyfills, a pack code, etc. So that is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video on inspecting and understanding static generation builds. But apart from what we have just learned, there is one very important point to understand when we run this built application for production. Let's see what that is in the next video.